TCU outlasts DBU tonight and gets a four to one victory in 12 innings over the Patriots on the road in Dallas. We'll talk about it next in Locked Up Martin Frogs. You are Locked On Horn Frogs. Your daily podcast on the TCU Horn Frogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. It's Locked On Horn Frogs. We're going to try to do these bonus baseball episodes after these midweek games, just sort of a recap of what happened. And a wild one tonight. TCU goes on the road and beats DBU 4 to 1. And I was thinking during this game, I should have just looked at the game notes, I guess. But um, DBU jumped out to a one nothing lead. I think they scored in the second inning um, off an error. TCU trying to double turn a double play. It didn't work out because of a fielding error. But anyway, while TCU was down for a few innings and struggling at the play, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, it feels like it's been a while since TCU has beaten DBU. Of course, they lost uh, in that game at the TC Regional a couple of years ago, and then these Tuesday night games have just not been kind to them against uh, the Patriots. And so I start looking back. Now they're four and six against DBU in their last ten, but they hadn't beaten them since 2018. So a significant win tonight. And the story of tonight's game was the freshman arms that TCU sent out there were fantastic. I mean, beyond fantastic, they were just great tonight. Um, Braden Sloan got the start, and he looked incredible. You know, he was he looked good against UTA, but walked a few guys. Didn't seem to be super confident, which you would expect that in your first collegiate start. Uh, but he goes out there five innings, one hit, one run, um, t- walked two, struck out two, and really like was super efficient. I mean, threw seventy six pitches tonight. Luis Rodriguez comes in after that, goes four and two thirds, one hit, no runs. Um, Ben Albit comes in and he's able to go an inning and a third again, just one hit. And then Cohen Fester comes in and closes it out after TCU took a four to one lead in the top of the 12th inning. Um, and Cohen has become a pretty solid relief option here early in the season. And so you're, you're starting to see this bullpen kind of come together. I don't know how all the moving parts are going to work because Luke Savage had a start this past weekend. But you have Savage available to come in in long relief. Um, you have uh, Cole Klecker, now Cohen Fesser, um, pos- you know, possibly Luis Rodriguez as the year goes on. Maybe he is able to make more starts or, excuse me, make more appearances on the weekend right now. It seems like he's kind of locked into that long relief role on Tuesday nights, which is a great way to get experience. But in a game where TCU struggled to play, left a lot of men on base again, uh, missed some opportunities. They were able to hold down the fort and just keep getting it done, inning after inning after inning. Found a way to keep DBU off the scoreboard and give themselves a chance. And really the young guys were fantastic all around. Anthony Silva had a great stat, you know, catch, diving catch on a line drive um, in the bottom of the 11th to keep that game going. DBU had first and second the bottom of the 11th, and Silva was able to, to make a play to uh, keep them off the board and get TCU another shot at the plate, and they did well. He also laid down a bunt in the top of the 12th um, after Carson Bowen, another freshman, hit a double, and pitcher made an error, and it led to Bowen scoring. So it didn't go down as a hit for Silva, but, you know, he made it. He executed what he's supposed to do well, and he did have one base knock today. He looks really comfortable at the plate. Carson Bowen has a, a really sweet swing. Um He's been their backup catcher this year, but he had two doubles tonight, and they were both ropes. One was down the line. The other one was off the wall in the 12th inning that started the rally to win that ball game. But I'm wondering if he eventually works his way into that DH role um, on the days where he doesn't catch just because they haven't really found anybody that's that stuck there yet. So uh, Bowen looks really comfortable with the play as well, and both him and Silva – have been really, really good early on. Talented recruiting class here coming in so far. Uh, And, again, those freshman pitchers did an outstanding job tonight. You know, from a negative standpoint, still a lot of missed opportunities. I I can't remember exactly what inning it was, but had a second and third and one out at one point. I think it was in the top of the sixth. 
when it was a 1-1 game um, after a Trey Richardson sort of hard hit ground ball that went for a double. Um, he was able to get on and just a, a couple, you know, a lineup by David Bishop and then a strikeout by Luke Boyers killed that rally. And, and this team just seems to struggle in situational hitting uh, moments, which was a weakness of theirs last year too. Uh, Luke Boyer's really struggled the plate tonight, 0 for 5 with five strikeouts. A tough night for him. He's having a rough go as of late. Hopefully he can straighten things out and and figure it out at the plate. But he's had a tough time um, the last few games. But overall, I mean, they, they hung in there and, and won this ball game, and I think it was a really impressive victory. You know, Trey Richardson has been outstanding, the transfer from Baylor. Um, he's really been a, a huge part of their success this season so far. Uh, he is now hitting after going uh, getting three hits tonight. Um, oh, well, that doesn't have his batting average. I'm actually looking at the wrong page. But anyway, Trey's having a really good season, and he had a, a big single. They had the bases loaded with one out, and it was a two-to-one game um, there in the 12th inning. Uh, and a strikeout put, put two guys out, and then Richardson came out and roped a single to get two more runs home and give them an, a couple insurance runs, which was big given the fact that you know, both teams have really struggled to score all game. That three-run lead felt uh, just, you know, mountainous and and kind of insurmountable the way the game had been going. Pitching staff comes in and closes out all around. You know, a couple errors tonight, which that continues to be something that plagues this team. Have to find a way to clean it up. Uh, Eli Nunez was – Elijah Nunez, excuse me, was back in the back in the lineup today. Um, didn't have the, the best night at the plate, but – you know, he's kind of coming back from concussion protocol. I still think when he and Austin Davis are there together, uh, they're just a much different team and a much better team, a much deeper lineup, one through nine, which is good news for TCU baseball because they need that. But, yeah, great win tonight. Um, this weekend, Frogs play Michigan, Louisville, and Rice at the Minute Maid Classic, and that will be uh, at Minute Maid Park where the Astros play. So pretty good uh, – Pretty good field there, and a nice midweek win over DPU. Now two wins in a row after dropping a couple games to Florida State this past weekend. Hopefully they can build on that momentum and uh, continue to keep it rolling um, at that Minute Maid Classic. But the, the story of the day was just these freshman arms were absolutely outstanding, and that's big-time encouraging news for a TCU team that's replacing a lot of talent off last year's squad. Um, and has done so nicely with the newcomers they brought in, either through the transfer portal or from the high school ranks. Uh, we will keep it going here on Locked on Horn Frogs. Uh, we'll have plenty of baseball, football, and basketball coverage. It's your team every day.